Okay, my name is Lee, WREX 300, and I was asked to do a video on how to build a node for the GMRS network. So that's what we're going to try to attempt today. We're starting off with Volpan uh, BF888, and uh, we're going to tear them apart. So we'll pause and we'll continue. Okay, so I'm trying to put you in my site here so you can see what I'm working on. I'm trying to set the camera up here so we can work on it. All right, so you need a a, a T8, uh, a T8 Torx tip tool in order to take these apart. I've already started taking this one apart. So there's two screws in the bottom. Okay, you'll need to pull the two knobs off take the antenna off and then you'll have little screws in here now inside these little screws I use a, a pair of jewelers needle nose to reach in there on each side of the tool uh, the knobs and turn it loose most of them are already loose from the factory so it's not that big of a deal once you get them loose you can take a little screwdriver tip and just spin them out of there and knock them out once you get those out, like I said, these screws will be removed, and then you'll pry this up. You'll need a screwdriver to get inside here to pry this up. Once you get that pried up, it'll be a little tight to pull up and out, but once you get it up and out, you'll want to be careful when you pull it sideways because you'll have your speaker wires connecting inside in here. The speaker wires, I've already unsoldered so I can work. You can see I put a little mark right here. There's a little white line right there that's one speaker and this is your other so this is your audio out and this is basically your ground so that's why I disconnected them so I can get into the radio and do the work I need to do yeah okay well with that next step is you'll be unsoldering this point for the antenna this point for power and you'll remove the screws, this one and this one, in order to take the board off. And then once you get it apart, you're going to remove the LED light here. Because you're going to be running your wires through that LED light hole here. That way the wires will come through. And it'll, it'll look something like this one when it's done. The wire will come through where the LED light was. Kind of makes it a, a unique spot so that you don't have to worry about drilling holes and doing all that extra work. So, let me pause here and we'll go on to the next section. So, I'm editing all this stuff. Anyway, to start with, you'll take here and you will remove the battery. Push the little tab down, slide the battery off, get the battery out, set it out of the way. You don't need that right now. Take your Torx number 8 and remove these two screws. These screws need to be removed in order to take the bow fan 888 apart. If they are not removed, you will not get it apart, obviously. Okay, I know. Let's see. Remove the antenna. Okay, that will be out of the way. And you will need to remove the both knobs. Now, inside, some of them are a little sticky. Inside, you will see the copper screws that goes around these. Okay, you know, I'm trying to get a video on it. Uh, I use a special jeweler's needle nose to remove those. Let me. So I'm editing all this stuff. Anyway, to start with, you'll take here and you will remove the battery. Push the little tab down, slide the battery off, get the battery out, set it out of the way. You don't need that right now. Take your Torx number eight and remove these two screws. These screws need to be removed in order to take the bow fan 888 apart. If they are not removed, you will not get it apart, obviously. Okay, I know. Let's see. Remove the antenna. Okay, that will be out of the way. And you will need to remove the both knobs. Now, inside, some of them are sticky. Inside, you will see the copper screws that goes around these okay you know I'm trying to get a video on it uh, I use a special jeweler's needle nose to remove those let me 
jeweler's needle nose you notice how they're round they're not squared off there's no jaws in them they got a little open splice they work great for getting in here and fitting right into the little tabs there you could modify it if you wish in order to fit in there a little bit better but you get in there and you can just be on both sides and just unscrew the screws here once you get it cracked loose it's real simple to take them out just a little pressure both sides locked in and unscrew it now that I say that because I put these in here a little bit tighter they're a little difficult to get apart anyway they are that free okay take your little screwdriver once they get loose and you can just spin them right on out of there they're that simple they get that loose okay there's one and this one's gonna be a little stubborn just because I said it anyway and then the other one just they just unscrew okay they fall right out piece of cake this one being a little bit of difficulty so you don't want to pinch on it when you do this because if you pinch on it then you're going to be pinching onto the threads onto the switches or the volume control or the antenna mount you don't want to do all that but then you're going to booger up the threads and can't get this on or off anyway there they are there's all three okay that way you can have them out of the way if you need them out of the way if i can pick them up okay next step you will have to pry this open right here okay pry it open so you can get inside of the radio put a little pressure don't be afraid a little bit of pressure not a lot a little bit of pressure and then when you get there you'll want to wiggle it backwards now i've got this already set up as a node so you'll see i got a, a jumble of a mess in there but uh once you get it set up and you get it pulled back knobs clear the tower you can come in here i'm going to turn this a little bit these are the antenna connections in here okay and then your node connections we're going to go over those step by step here in a minute jeweler's needle nose you notice how they're round they're not squared off there's no jaws in them they got a little open splice they work great for getting in here and fitting right into the little tabs there you could modify it if you wish in order to fit in there a little bit better but you get in there and you can just be on both sides and just unscrew the screws here once you get it cracked loose it's real simple to take them out just a little pressure both sides locked in and unscrew it now that i say that because i put these in here a little bit tighter they're a little difficult to get apart anyway they are that free okay take your little screwdriver once they get loose and you can just spin them right on out of there they're that simple they get that loose okay there's one and this one's gonna be a little stubborn just because i said it anyway and then the other one just they just unscrew okay they fall right out piece of cake this one being a little bit of difficulty so you don't want to pinch on it when you do this because if you pinch on it then you're going to be pinching onto the threads onto the switches or the volume control or the antenna mount you don't want to do all that but then you're going to booger up the threads and can't get this on or off anyway there they are there's all three okay that way you can have them out of the way you need them out of the way if i can pick them up okay next step you will have to pry this open right here okay pry it open so you can get inside of the radio put a little pressure don't be afraid a little bit of pressure not a lot a little bit of pressure and then when you get there you'll want to wiggle it backwards now i've got this already set up as a node so you'll see i got a, a jumble of a mess in there but uh, once you get it set up and you get it pulled back knobs clear the tower you can come in here i'm going to turn this a little bit these are the antenna connections in here okay and then your node connections we're going to go over those step by step here in a minute okay something i wanted to show there are two separate type of bofan 288 so for this video i get to show you both styles instead of making two separate videos oh isn't that going to be a lot nicer okay so anyway you can see the one here 
I've already got set up. Okay, this is uh, set up already. Let's see. This is for your mic with a 10K. And I'll, I'll show the, where it's located at. This is for your C uh, OS. Your ground wire going like that to the ground in here. I don't know if you can actually see that. This is your mic key up. This is what PTT. Okay. And then all the way on the other side up here is a 60K, 68K ohm resistor going to the high side of your volume control. Okay. And you'll have to really pay attention where you connect to on this particular board. There is a PTIO and the SP minus. Well, that's where obviously our speaker is connected. And right below that is a test point 11. And that's where you want to hook your uh, 10K resistor to. The test point 11. Now, this is on the longboard. Okay. Now, for your COS connection, this is actually a test point uh, 4 or 3, something like that. Right down here. It's, I don't know if you can actually see it or not. I'm trying to get it focused so you can see this. You may not be able to see it good enough. I'm sorry. But there will be three test points across the bottom. And then right above it is another test point. I can't see it that well. I think it's test point six. It might be eight. Anyway, that's where your COS will be connecting to. Like I said, your PTT is connected right to the switch area. Right here on this one line. Okay. And obviously, like I said, your ground is going to the middle down the side. That is... Ground anywhere on the board that's ground is ground, it's obvious. Okay, something I wanted to show there are two separate type of Bofan 288. So, for this video, I get to show you both styles instead of making two separate videos. Well, isn't that going to be a lot nicer? Okay, so anyway, you can see the one here I've already got set up. Okay, this is uh set up already let's see this is for your mic with a 10k and I'll, I'll show the where it's located at this is for your C uh, OS your ground wire going like that to the ground in here I don't know if you can actually see that this is your mic key up this is what PTT okay and then all the way on the other side up here is a 60k 68 K ohm resistor going to the high side of your volume control okay and you'll have to really pay attention where you connect to on this particular board there is a PTIO and the SP minus well that's where obviously our speaker is connected and right below that is a test point 11 and that's where you want to hook your uh, 10k resistor to the test point 11. Now, this is on the longboard. Okay. Now, for your COS connection, this is actually a test point uh, four or three, something like that. Right down here. It's, I don't know if you can actually see it or not. I'm trying to get it focused so you can see this. You may not be able to see it good enough. I'm sorry. But there will be three test points across the bottom. And then right above it is another test point. I can't see it that well. I think it's test point six. It might be eight. Anyway, that's where your COS will be connecting to. Like I said, your PTT is connected right to the switch area. Right here on this one line. Okay. And obviously, like I said, your ground is going to the middle down the side. That is ground. Anywhere on the board that's ground is ground. It's obvious. Okay, now onto the short board. The PTT on this one is going to be the second pin down on the mic side. Your 68K is going to go here to the high side. And your um, mic is going to go to the right below the speaker thing. Again, it's right below it. Where the, the ground was. That's why I marked this when I took this apart so I know where the speakers were. It'll be right below it. Just make sure you don't touch these when you solder together. I made that mistake once. 
and then your uh, COS is on the other side of this. I'm going to take that off right now so we can get to it. Okay, now onto the short board. The PTT on this one is going to be the second pin down on the mic side. Your 68K is going to go here to the high side. And your um, mic is going to go to the right below the speaker thing. Again, it's right below it where the, the ground was. That's why I marked this when I took this apart so I know where the speakers were. It'll be right below it. Just make sure you don't touch these when you solder together. I made that mistake once. And then your uh, COS is on the other side of this. I'm going to take that off right now so we can get to it. I left out a screw. I'm, I'm sorry. On the ground sock here, there's a, there's another screw that you got to take out before you can take it apart. I came across that as I'm soldering and, and taking this stuff apart right now. Anyway, I unsoldered the power here. And I unsoldered the antenna. But obviously the antenna is being a little sticky, so I'm just going to do it as I take it apart right here right now. Just like that. There's the antenna. There's your power. Awesome. I don't know if you've seen that or not. Let's see. Yeah, you've seen that. Okay, now, what I'm going to do now is remove the LED. We don't need the LED. It's just in our way. It's going to be in our way, and it's going to be plugging up a hole that we want to use. So, let's see. LED right there. We're going to heat it up and take our LED out of place here. Okay. A little desoldering little clean up make sure we can still see I don't even know if we can still see okay just like that okay that should be enough still may have to put a little heat to it to get it out of there but we can get it out right here boom a little heat slowly you don't want to overheat nothing so uh, it's coming out of there just a little slow and this is the real world of how to do things yeah that's right move your hand out of the way so you don't melt and burn your finger okay there we go LED out I like to clean the holes up that way it stays a clean clean area that way you don't have problems with it in the future there nice and clean ready to go no problems Okay, just like that. Now that we're here, we're going to go into the COS. I left out a screw. I'm, I'm sorry. On the ground sock here, there's a, there's another screw that you got to take out before you can take it apart. I came across that as I'm soldering and, and taking this stuff apart right now. Anyway, I unsoldered the power here. And I unsoldered the antenna but obviously the antenna is being a little sticky so I'm just going to do it as I take it apart right here right now just like that there's the antenna there's your power awesome I don't know if you've seen that or not let's see yeah you've seen that okay now what I'm going to do now is remove the LED we don't need the LED it's just in our way it's going to be in our way and it's going to be plugging up a hole that we want to use so Let's see, LED right there. We're going to heat it up and take our LED out of place here. Okay. A little desoldering. A little clean up. Make sure we can still see. I don't even know if we can still see. Okay. Just like that. Okay, that should be enough. Still may have to put a little heat to it to get it out of there. But we can get it out right here. Boom. A little heat slowly. You don't want to overheat nothing. So uh, it's coming out of there. Just a little slow. And this is the real world of how to do things. Yeah, that's right. Move your hand out of the way so you don't melt and burn your finger. Okay. There we go. LED out. I like to clean the holes up. That way it stays a clean clean area that way you don't have problems with it in the future there 
nice and clean, ready to go. No problems. Okay, just like that. Now that we're here, we're going to go into the COS. Okay, I'm going to do something I normally don't do, but I'm going to show a picture off the internet. This was a picture that I found that shows the little boards. It shows locations and the setup of what we're doing right here. So it's a little simpler. There's also another photograph for the long board. Let's see if I can't get a picture of that. That's a 68 ohm resistor at the top, okay? And 10 ohm resistor in the middle. There's your ground, your PTT, and your COS. Okay? Your mic, as I was telling you before, is right close to the speaker connection, so you gotta be able to make sure you get that run right. So with that, let's bring this back here. They want you to connect to this little bitty spot right here. Okay? I've done this. Let me get my other tool here. That's the wrong one I want. The best tool I've found is this one right here. Anyway little bitty mark right there i don't know if you can actually see that or not but man it's scary i mean i've done it i can do it but you gotta really know what you're doing in order to hit that spot flip it over and you can connect over here that's why we pulled the board out okay you can connect down here run a wire up through here and flip it over and come around here and connect into your wires going out. I will show you that. Okay, I'm gonna do something I normally don't do, but I'm gonna show a picture off the internet. This was a picture that I found that shows the little boards. It shows locations and the setup of what we're doing right here. So it's a little simpler. There's also another photograph for the longboard. Let's see if I can't get a picture of that. That's a 68 ohm resistor at the top. Okay. And 10 ohm resistor in the middle. There's your ground, your PTT, and your COS. Okay. Your mic. As I was telling you before, it's right close to the speaker connection, so you got to be able to make sure you get that run right. So with that, let's bring this back here. They want you to connect to this little bitty spot right here, okay? I've done this. Let me get my other tool here. That's the wrong one I want. The best tool I've found is this one right here. Anyway, little bitty mark right there. I don't know if you can actually see that or not, but... Man, it's scary. I mean, I've done it. I can do it, but you got to really know what you're doing in order to hit that spot. Flip it over, and you can connect over here. That's why we pulled the board out, okay? You can connect down here, run a wire up through here, and flip it over, and come around here, and connect into your wires going out. I will show you that. Okay, this is a USB data cable cord. I cut it so I can be using it because I need the five wires. We're going to use the data cables for uh, the COS and the mic and obviously ground here. And then your PTT and your um, CMOS. So this will be all set up. Obviously, it's a nice tight fit in the hole, so you don't have to worry about it pulling out so easy. It makes it nice and easy. Okay, this is a USB data cable cord. I cut it so I can be using it because I need the five wires. We're going to use the data cables for uh, the COS and the mic and obviously ground here. And then your PTT and your um, CMOS. So this will be all set up. Obviously it's a nice tight fit in the hole. So you don't have to worry about it 
pulling out so easy. Makes it nice and easy. Okay, I kind of jumped the gun up there a little bit. Installed the, the wire <clears throat> and I tinned all of the ends. That way everything's all tinned and ready to go. Tending means, you know, putting a little solder on there with a heat gun. Put the solder so the solder will stick to this wire right here so it's got solder pre-done onto the, the wiring. If For those who don't know what tending means. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, that would be that part of it. Now, what we're doing next is setting this stuff up for a repeater. I'm sorry, uh, a node. So I'm going to be cleaning this little bitty pin spot right here and connecting my green wire to the COS control spot right here. A little bitty spot. It's really difficult. If you don't know what you're doing, you probably don't want to do this because it's very easy to break this uh, run on the circuit board. And whenever you connect to this with the wire, it's easy to pull that off the board and break it. Okay, I kind of jumped the gun up there a little bit. Installed the, the wire <clears throat> and I tinned all of the ends. That way everything's all tinned and ready to go. Tending means, you know, putting a little solder on there with a heat gun. With the solder so the solder will stick to this wire right here so it's got solder pre-done onto the the wiring if for those who don't know what tinning means <clears throat> excuse me but uh, that would be that part of it now what we're doing next is setting this stuff up for a repeater I'm sorry uh, a node so I want to be cleaning this little bitty pin spot right here and connecting my green wire to the COS control spot right here. A little bitty spot. It's really difficult. If you don't know what you're doing, you probably don't want to do this because it's very easy to break this uh, run on the circuit board. And whenever you connect to this with the wire, it's easy to pull that off the board and break it. Okay, so what I wanted to point out here is, as I'm hooking these wires up, as little as that is, use some hot glue. It's non-conductive, and you can hold your wires in place so they don't move around and stuff, because that's a very small run on the circuit board you're connecting to. So I recommend, as soon as you make the contact, hold on to it. Don't move around. Because it can peel off of that contact or it can peel that run off the circuit board and you lose all that. Hold on to it and put hot glue on it and let it dry. Don't just put it on there and let go, but let it dry. Once it dries and it's cured, then you can relax. But still use caution with it because you still don't want to try to peel that off of there. Okay, so what I wanted to point out here is as I'm hooking these wires up, as little as that is use some hot glue it's non-conductive and you can hold your wires in place so they don't move around and stuff because that's a very small run on the circuit board you're connecting to so I recommend as soon as you make the contact hold on to it don't move around because it can peel off of that contact or it can peel that run off the circuit board and you lose all that hold on to it and put hot glue on it and let it dry don't just put it on there and let go but let it dry once it dries and it's cured then you can relax but still use caution with it because you still don't want to try to peel that off of there for the ground I like using this board here it's nice obviously big clean area for ground so usually what I'll do is I'll just scar it up a little bit the reason for this is so that your solder when you try to solder to this the solder will actually bond a lot easier and faster yes I know some guys say well it's already a clean spot bared off but you know what I like to do side on caution and uh, make it a little bit better just it makes me happy let's just put it that way well now my gun don't want to work what happened to my gun 
for the ground I like using this board here it's nice obviously big clean area for ground so usually what I'll do is I'll just scar it up a little bit the reason for this is so that your solder when you try to solder to this the solder will actually bond a lot easier and faster yes I know some guys say well it's already a clean spot bared off but you know what I like to do side on caution and uh, make it a little bit better just it makes me happy let's just put it that way well now my gun don't want to work what happened to my gun okay back to where I was at solder and iron came unplugged anyway I scratched this up and I want to tin the ground because it's just a good ground I know people say yeah you don't need to scratch it up it'll take solder well yes but it would be nice to be able to have it uh, take the solder in a good position well my gun still ain't hot enough but it you're gonna solder the ground to that point okay back to where I was at solder and iron came unplugged anyway I scratched this up and I want to tin the ground because it's just a good ground I know people say yeah you don't need to scratch it up it'll take solder well yes but it would be nice to be able to have it uh, take the solder in a good position well my gun still ain't hot enough but it you're gonna solder the ground to that point okay the PTT this is where the PTT will be connecting at right here the second one down on the side okay that way you know exactly where it's at you don't get mixed up you know the ground I might be able to have a nice little place to ground it actually before we do all that I want to put a little heat shrink across this that way this doesn't touch nothing else on the board you don't want that shorting out and burning something else up on the radio so let me get my heat shrink okay the PTT this is where the PTT will be connecting at right here the second one down on the side okay that way you know exactly where it's at you don't get mixed up you know the ground I might be able to have a nice little place to ground it actually before we do all that I want to put a little heat shrink across this that way this doesn't touch nothing else on the board you don't want that shorting out and burning something else up on the radio so let me get my heat shrink okay so heat shrink I go to Harbor Freight I get it cheap there it's uh, not trying to advertise for Harbor Freight but uh, you know what it's good cheap stuff and it works and gets the job done so I'm gonna make this the link that I need right here and I'm gonna cut it it's not uh, it's small enough I wish it was a little smaller but this is all I have right now so this is what we're gonna do with it we're just gonna take and cut it if you don't have a Harbor Freight in your area maybe you can find some kind of electronic store somewhere that will carry heat shrink that way you can insulate your wiring and because you don't want nothing shorting out I mean obviously you're doing this for a reason and if it comes up and shorts out you're back to square one uh oh my camera is falling sorry about that there we go okay and then I'll come back and I'll heat that up so it'll it'll seal on there good now let's get to the resistors I'm gonna write this out right here so you can see what I'm talking about we need a 68 ohm resistor to go to this point here okay so 68 if you're looking at the resistors they are color coded there's colors on them there's one two three and then the fourth bar this is your tolerance okay your tolerance is uh, good or bad it's it's give or take usually about 10 percent somewhere in that area which is silver gold would be five percent okay so on your uh, tolerance want 68 okay so that's 68,000 so for the first color six you want as a blue okay and on your second color since it's an eight eight is uh, gray okay so and your tolerance or, I'm sorry your third is telling you how much so you want 10,000 so that is going to be orange okay so you want blue gray orange 
the tolerance it doesn't really matter so much but that's what you want okay this is your resistor and that's what you want there's wires coming out here and here now the 10k same thing this is going to be orange okay but 10 this will be a brown black okay so brown black orange okay this would be 10k and this is 68k so that's 68,000 tolerance and this is 10,000 the 68k is going to the high side on the volume knob the 10k will be going right below the ground speaker connection here this is the ground speaker this is where you're connecting when you do this make sure you don't get a jump on here don't let the solder touch both of them together or this one as well you only want to be on this one leg that's it so pay attention uh, I will show you okay so heat shrink I go to Harbor Freight I get it cheap there it's uh, not trying to advertise for Harbor Freight but uh, you know what it's good cheap stuff and it works and gets the job done so I'm gonna make this the link that I need right here and I'm gonna cut it it's not uh, it's small enough I wish it was a little smaller but this is all I have right now so this is what we're gonna do with it we're just gonna take and cut it if you don't have a Harbor Freight in your area maybe you can find some kind of electronic store somewhere that will carry heat shrink that way you can insulate your wiring and because you don't want nothing shorting out I mean obviously you're doing this for a reason and if it comes up and shorts out you're back to square one uh oh my camera is falling sorry about that there we go okay and then I'll come back and I'll heat that up so it'll it'll seal on there good now let's get to the resistors I'm gonna write this out right here so you can see what I'm talking about we need a 68 ohm resistor to go to this point here okay so 68 if you're looking at the resistors they are color coded there's colors on them there's one two three and then the fourth bar this is your tolerance okay your tolerance is uh, good or bad it's it's give or take usually about 10 percent somewhere in that area which is silver gold would be five percent okay so on your uh, tolerance about 68 okay so that's 68,000 so for the first color six you want as a blue okay and on your second color since it's an eight eight is uh, gray okay so and your tolerance or, I'm sorry your third is telling you how much so you want 10,000 so that is going to be orange okay so you want blue gray orange the tolerance it doesn't really matter so much but that's what you want okay this is your resistor and that's what you want there's wires coming out here and here now the 10k same thing this is going to be orange okay but 10 this will be a brown black okay so brown black orange okay this would be 10k and this is 68k so that's 68,000 tolerance and this is 10,000 the 68k is going to the high side on the volume knob the 10k will be going right below the ground speaker connection here this is the ground speaker this is where you're connecting when you do this make sure you don't get a jump on here don't let the solder touch both of them together or this one as well you only want to be on this one leg that's it so pay attention uh, I will show you okay the insulation is covering the resistor 68k I'm sorry 10k this is the 10k 
Okay, insulation's covering it so it won't touch nothing else. This is the 68K. I, I unhooked it a minute ago. But the 68K will connect right here. Okay, make sure it's insulated. You don't want nothing touching anything else on the board. It will short it out and you will not work and or burn up your radio, burn up your sound card, and your Raspberry Pi. Now you're out all of that. Okay, the insulation is covering the resistor, 68K. I'm sorry, 10K. This is the 10K. Okay, insulation is covering it so it won't touch nothing else. This is the 68K. I, I unhooked it a minute ago. But the 68K will connect right here. Okay, make sure it's insulated. You don't want nothing touching anything else on the board. It will short it out and you will not work and or burn up your radio, burn up your sound card, and your Raspberry Pi. Now you're out all of that. Okay, so... Alright, sorry. Okay, so we're going to connect this up here because I'm putting the resistors out side of the radio on this particular radio is they're not going to be internal they're going to be external but as you can see these wires are touching here and they are not touching any other spot on the board they're separated good don't want that touching because I got to come back and hook a speaker here and a speaker there and then this board this particular one will be done the only heat shrink I got is on one which is the ground so it won't touch nothing so we're good with that. Okay, so... Alright, sorry. Okay, so... We're going to connect this up here because I'm putting the resistors outside of the radio on this particular radio. They're not going to be internal. They're going to be external. But as you can see, these wires are touching here and they are not touching any other spot on the board. They're separated. Good. Don't want that touching. Because i got to come back and hook a speaker here and a speaker there. And then this board, this particular one will be done. The only heat shrink i got is on one, which is the ground, so it won't touch nothing. So we're good with that. Okay, this is going to be a little bit of a tight fit right here. But I want to get up in here. I'm hoping this is showing on the camera. And hook this up without touching nothing else. Boom. No, oh, there we go. Separate those two. There we go. Okay, that's one. Speaker. Speaker wire. That's what these are here. Speaker wires. Where's my other speaker wire at? There you are. Hiding up there on me, huh? Okay, we've got to reroute it to get it around where we need it to go. Now, same thing with this one. Let's make sure that it is not touching anything else. So I need to move this white wire so I can get to it without melting that. I'm going to solder it. Come there. There we go. And not long enough. There we go. Alright, so. I'm trying to just get it in location here so I can grab it. It's just a little bit. Tight fit there. There we go. Hopefully you can see that there too. And I can come in here and give a little dab do you. There we go. Make sure we're not touching nothing else. There we go. You want to put a little heat on your heat shrink? That's fine. You can put a little heat on that. It ain't going to hurt it. It's actually good for it. That's why they call it heat shrink. Okay. That's all connected internally. Okay. So now that we're ready to put it back together, let's um, get this moved here so we don't get that glare up there. I'm going to reconnect the power right here. Put a nice little, nice little clean dab, and the same thing here. Nice little clean dab. There we go. Just like so. Just like that. So that should take care of that. Okay, this is going to be a little bit of a tight fit right here, but I want to get up in here. I'm hoping this is showing on the camera and hook this up without touching nothing else. Boom. Oh, there we go. 
separate those two there we go okay that's one speaker speaker wires that's what these are here speaker wires where's my other speaker wire at there you are hiding up there on me huh okay we gotta reroute it to get it around where we need it to go now same thing with this one let's make sure that it is not touching anything else so I need to move this white wire so I can get to it without melting that. I'm going to solder it. Come there. There we go. And not long enough. There we go. Alright, so. Trying to just get it in location here so I can grab it. It's just a little bit. Tight fit there. There we go. Hopefully you can see that there too. And I can come in here and give a little dab do you there we go make sure we're not touching nothing else there we go you want to put a little heat on your heat shrink that's fine you can put a little heat on it it ain't gonna hurt it it's actually good for it that's why they call it heat shrink okay that's all connected internally okay so now that we're ready to put it back together let's um Get this one here so we don't get that glare off there. I'm going to reconnect the power right here. Put a nice little, nice little clean dab, and the same thing here. Nice little clean dab. There we go. Just like so. Just like that. So that should take care of that. Okay. I'm going to set this back together. Hopefully we have all the wires out of the way so we can squeeze it back together. And there again, it is a tight fit. You got to pull in, push down, pull in and push down. It's just it's a little bit tighter than I'd like to know about. So why are we holding up? Let's see. There we go. It just wasn't all the way up in there. They can be a little forceful. Got to be a little forceful. Be a little manhandling of it, I guess you can say. I'm not trying to be prejudiced or anything. Just, just saying. You know, a little power behind it sometimes. Need a little tool right here that just for some reason is not lining up just the way I like it. There we go. There we go. I'm trying to make sure all the seals are set and it's all lined up in a good location okay buttons all working okay let's get some screws back in this critter so we can start stuffing her back together let's see if you notice it's up a little bit back here it's got a little elevation to it that's because you're pinching everything all back in there so Put a little pressure to it there. Get it back down. You know, and don't over tighten these screws, please. These are only metal and they're plastic, so you can strip them out very easily. I've had people do that. What I usually do is watch. I'll back it up, put a little pressure, and you'll hear it go thunk right there. And that tells you the threads lined up perfectly, and you're not cutting new threads back into this uh, plastic. A lot of people, they just throw it up there and just start cranking on it. You know, you end up cutting new threads and eventually strip out the hole. Okay, so that part is done. You can see, nice and neat, clean, nice. Okay, I'm going to set this back together. Hopefully we have all the wires out of the way. So we can squeeze it back together. And there again, it is a tight fit. You got to pull in, push down. Pull in and push down. It's just it's a little bit tighter than I'd like to know about. So why are we holding up? Let's see. There we go. It just wasn't all the way up in there. They can be a little forceful. Got to be a little forceful. Be a little manhandling of it i guess you can say i'm not trying to be prejudiced or anything just just saying you know 
a little power behind it sometime. I need a little tool right here that just for some reason is not lining up just the way I like it. There we go. There we go. I'm trying to make sure all the seals are set and it's all lined up in a good location. Okay, buttons all working. Okay, let's get some screws back in this critter so we can start stuffing her back together. Let's see. If you notice, it's up a little bit back here. It's got a little elevation to it. That's because you're pinching everything all back in there. So put a little pressure to it there. Get it back down. You know, and don't over tighten these screws, please. These are only metal into plastic, so you can strip them out very easily. I've had people do that. What I usually do is watch. I'll back it up, put a little pressure, and you'll hear it go thunk right there. And that tells you the threads lined up perfectly, and you're not cutting new threads back into this uh, plastic. A lot of people, they just throw it up there and just start cranking on it. You know, you end up cutting new threads and eventually strip out the hole okay so that part is done you can see nice and neat clean nice 